Hey guys, here's a quick tutorial on how to make a range indicator for your Unity game. Just to demonstrate real quick, I've created this quick tower defense game. Here we can place down a turret, and by clicking on the turret, we can see the range of the turret. Uh, if I cheat myself some golden, I can demonstrate this again. Here's the range of a frozen turret versus a arrow turret. Um, again, we can do a fire turret. We could then upgrade this, and you can see how the range has gotten bigger. Upgrade this again, and you can see the range is changing based off the item that's selected here. So what we'll be doing is replicating this and teaching you how to implement that. So to start off, we're going to need the model for our range indicator. I found the easiest way to do this, um, especially for Unity, is to just do something quickly in Blender. Um, if you don't want to make the model yourself, even though it takes probably like a minute, uh, I'll provide a download link in the description. But moving to Blender real quick, all you have to do is open up a new scene, uh, delete everything that's in it. So you just have this empty area. Um, actually, I can just go new general. This is what it'll open up by default. You can select your camera, delete, light, delete, and delete that. Then hit add mesh and come here to cylinder. Once you've got the cylinder added, can tab into edit mode and then go to face select with three it's this button right there delete the faces here and same thing at the bottom delete faces and this will be our range indicator that's all you have to do so we can go file export FBX make sure we apply the transform or the rotations will be wrong and then come over here and right here we can just do um, range indicator dot fbx and we will export this i'll just put it on my desktop for tutorial sake once we've got that we can come back over the unity we can go into wherever you put your art at and come over here and grab your fbx file and then just drag that into unity it's going to come in and it's going to look just like this so now if we come back to our scene view <coughs> and we drag this in come over here here's our range indicator You'll notice all the uh, stuff came over properly. And now all we really need to do is make a material for it. So if we create a new material, right? And we'll call this uh, range red. And then what we can do is apply this to there. Now you'll also notice that we can't actually, like it's kind of weird. We can't see, like ideally we'd see this range here. And that's actually a material setting. So if we come over here in our material, you'll see render face. We want to ch set this to both. And now we can see the full uh, cylinder on both sides. Uh, you can also do uh, back only if you want to just see this side and have the close side hidden. Uh, that's up to you. Totally uh, preference. For this, we'll do both. And then we can come down here to our color. And we can set this to be a nice red. Um, I want my enemies range to look kind of scary. And then we can also come to emission and this will kind of make it glow a little bit. If we give it a nice red emission, that should be pretty good. So once we've got this set up, you'll notice that Blender's default um, cylinder is one unit wide. Uh, if you come, you can kind of see the, let's see right there, how this is like the radius of the cylinder is one unit. Well, in Unity, it's also one unit by default. So you have a basic one unit radius. So anything that has a range that's set in Unity units, which most of the time will be, you will be able to just multiply the scale of this on the X and the Z by the range. So what we can do here as an example, let's say I have a tower and the range is 30. You can just come here and set this to 30. And now you have a range of 30 thing. Maybe I have another tower and it's at 50. And now you have a range of 50. Um, this is pretty much how this would work. So in your code, what you're going to do is you're going to set the scale of the object and the position to where wherever like the center of your tower is or whatever you're trying to do an indicator for. And that should be a good way to show the range. If you're doing range differently than using Unity stuff, you're probably going to have to do a conversion figure out the actual distance between your range unit and this one and convert between it. Um, I won't show you how to do that today though. Uh, so moving along to actually implement this, we're gonna take our range indicator 
and we're going to go to my player and I'm going to apply that onto that prefab and then we can look at this player controller script. So if I pop this open, in the player controller, we're just doing a simple check here for our handling mouse input. We're checking if uh, we're, our user's clicking their left mouse button. And then you can kind of ignore this. This is for the UI, it just ignores the UI system. But we're checking if they click the left mouse button. And then we check right here if they hit a tower. And if they did hit a tower, what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the range indicator, which is the thing that we just drug in in the scene to active. We're gonna move its position to the tower's center position. And then we're going to change the scale and we're gonna get the tower's range and on X and Z. And we're gonna set that to scale it on the X and Z to be equal to that range. And then we'll leave one as the Y axis so it doesn't get really tall. If you set this not as one, you'll end up with something that looks like, let's see here, we can change this here, something that looks like this which is really a thick boy. Um, you might want something thicker in your game, depending on your terrain and everything, but I found for mine, one is pretty good. Um, so yeah, now we can kind of demonstrate it. Now that we've got that saved, we'll disable it for now, and then we'll hit play on our game. Come over here, down a tower, and there's that red range indicator uh, that we just created. And then again, we can come up here, and we can give ourselves enough gold for a more expensive tower. There's that one. This one's a little bit bigger. This one's a little bit smaller. Then we can upgrade it and it's gonna get bigger. Upgrade it again, now it's all the way out here. And then if we play the game, we should see that this turret will shoot that at the range spot. So that's pretty much how that works. Thanks for watching. Uh, good luck building.